How's it going guys? It's me, the Don Fanatic, and welcome to week 5 of the Pokemon Premier League. Now, last week we didn't do too hot against Uzi and the Thunderclap Titans, losing 4-0, meaning that we kind of really wanted to win this week. Um, not that I don't want to win every week anyway, but we really wanted to win this week to get ourselves back on track, keep on moving up towards those playoff spaces. It's not going to be easy though. This week we're playing Daria and the Minneapolis Miascaradas. I hope I got that right. Daria's team is dumb, quite frankly. I've said this about every team, but I really mean it about Daria's team. Iron Bundle, Zapdos, Terra Ogapon, yeah, Terra Ogapon, King Gambit, Don Fan, myself, trying to use it myself against me. Unfez, not Unfezant, Unfezant <laughs> Dippity, Milotic, Terra Colossal with Fairy, Ghost and Water, Spidops and Mistrevus. So, uh, like, maybe not Spidops and Mistrevus, but the other eight, all of them are in contention of coming to this game. All of them are absolutely terrifying in their own way. But, myself and the council think we have come up with the best way to combat this team. There was lots of to and fro's. We thought maybe Hyper Offense is going to be the best. Actually, there's quite a few of my defensive mons that have really good matchups here, so it's going to be an interesting battle for sure. But let's look into the team of the six Pokemon that I did decide to bring against Daria for week five of the Pokemon Premier League. The first set of the team this week is going to be Cinderace. Benched last week for Uzi, so maybe it's time for it to come back. But we're running some heat on it this week. I say some heat, I'm pretty sure it's been used in draft many times before, but actually the matchup here it has is incredible. So what we have decided to do is give it the Silk Scarf as an item. The team might be thinking what's going on here, but we have then got Pyroball, Sword Stance, Double Edge and Quick Attack. With the Adamant Nature Adamant, Nature plus two, Silk Scarf, Double Edge guarantees a kill on any Milotic set. Unless it's status, of course. Um, even then it's going to do a huge chunk to it. And actually it just does a chunk to anything on Daria's team. I did mention that they have a Mistrevus, but I don't think it's going to be coming to this matchup. There is the option for Terra Colossal, or Ghost, which could be an issue, but if it's Terra Water or Terra Fairy then that does work out really well. But it's generally really good for breaking, and I do expect Daria to maybe think that Cinderace could be Scar, or something like the Ogapon if it got out of hand, or even maybe Iron Bundle if that isn't Choice Scar. It could obviously be Booster Energy as well. But Cinderace has got a really good matchup for this game, and I just don't think they'll be expecting this set. And this set breaks defensive cores like it's nothing. It's actually disgusting. I never realised quite how strong it was. But yeah, the Cinderace is a bit spicy this week, but hopefully it will put in some work. Oh, and the other thing is, we decided to go Adamant. Uh, Ellie made a good point when she was helping me build for this that I don't really need Jolly, because if Ogapon does just Terrastalize, then it gets the speed boost and outspeeds me anyway. Not sure what it would be doing to me, it probably should be you turning out, which isn't the end of the world, but having that trade off for the power, for things like the Milotic and maybe like the Unpheasant and stuff like that is really, not the Unpheasant, I keep calling it Unpheasant. Pheasant Dippity will be really helpful. So that's the Cinderace set this week. The second Pokemon on the team this week is gonna be Typhoon the Latios. This is a set we went really back and forth on in preparation. Um, at one point we were sub with Calm Mind, Psychic and Aura Sphere. But then we thought actually what setup opportunities are we going to get? We kind of then thought maybe Specs would work, but then I didn't really want to risk clicking a Psychic move or a Dragon move and giving King Gambit a free switch in. So during building with the team, with the guys, sorry, the council, we did go with Specs, but I actually changed it to Soul Dew this morning before we battled. Um, and Soul Dew I think is just a lot freer. Yes, it only boosts Psychic and Dragon moves, but even a King Gambit doesn't necessarily want to switch into a Soul Dew Drake and Meteor from the Latios. So, and it gives me the freedom to cook for the turn too, obviously not against King Gambit because I'll be a sucker punch. But it just seemed to make more sense to go for Soul Dew to allow the swapping of moves. So we are Psychic because I don't want to run Luster Purge this week. Not that it would have benefited the King Gambit, but there is also an Ogapon, which, you know, I've got a special defense drop on that. It would give a plus two in attack because of Defiant. There was, obviously, also King Gambit. Not that I can drop any of its stats with my other three moves, but that was also Defiant one, so I had to keep those in mind. That's why I've got Aura Sphere and then Flip Turn is completing the set just for some, just for some, you know, 
uh, momentum building here. Because momentum against Darius team is going to be quite key this week. Other than that, we are running pretty much max speed, max HP, max HP, max special attack, sorry. Purely to try and speed tie the Pokemon, and if Daria doesn't put enough speed in to try and speed tie me, then obviously I'm going to be outspeeding it. We're outspeeding everything minus the Iron Bundle with this, so it allows me to click Psychic and Draco almost freely, because Daria will have to respect the fact that I will have Aura Sphere on this. Even if King Gambit has got the Chopple, it's going to be doing a lot of damage, so... It's something that could do a lot of work this week against Daria, much like it does a lot of the other teams. The first Pokemon on the team this week is going to be Pookie the Zeb Striker. Now if you'd asked me before the season whether my week 5 Zeb Striker would have made what would be its third appearance by now, I probably wouldn't have believed you. But once again, it's got a pretty decent matchup here now. There's one key thing stopping this set, and that is Domfan. So we have kind of got ways of dealing with it in Latios and some of the other team members later on. Once that's gone, Electric moves are very free against Daria's team. Um, there is Ogre Pond as a resist, but depending on the Ogre Pond set, Ogre Pond set, sorry, it could be a lead, for example, with spikes, um, then it might not be much of an issue. And obviously I am Sapsicle, which means Ivy Cudgel does absolutely nothing. And the Ogre Pond, Ivy Cudgel will be giving me a damage boost, which is very nice. So we are running basically enough speed to outspeed as a plus one Ogre Pond. We are running Terra Fire like a contingency plan in case it gets too ridiculous if it clicks trailblaze then yeah i'm i'm pretty stuffed but we are going to run super cell slam just for strong stab damage it'll do a lot of damage to the pheasant dipity i've got it right this time for my low tick um the king gambit might take a you know might get tickled the zap dose that i am bundle there is things like Colossal, which are just naturally bulky, but if that's Terra Water for any reason, again, a really strong stab move against it. Bolt Switch for Momentum, Terra Blast for the Terra Fire, and then Low Kick is there for the King Gambit. Even if it is Chuckle, Low Kick is going to be my best bet against it out of all of these moves, unless I am Terra Fire, then Terra Fire, Terra Blast. Yeah, that was a mouthful. We'll probably do a bit more. <clears throat> but we are running speed, like I said, to our speed the other one. The rest in the attack. And then we are a bit in physical bolt, just in case it helps me live like a sucker punch from King Gambit, for example. So that's the Zeb Strike set this week. The fourth Pokemon on the team this week is going to be Tinkerton, ever consistent and present in the teams this season. I had a real tough time making this set. I knew Tinkerton had to come, it had a decent matchup here. Um, it's kind of my preliminary check to bundle. If it's not Scarf Bundle, then this thing can tank moves for days. I think it takes four Hydro Pumps to kill this thing in a 1v1. By that point, I've probably killed the bundle. Um, so I, I kind of needed to bring it for the bundle. I have got other ways of trying to deal with it, as I'll, I'll talk about later on. But this was here as, as, as the prim, like, preliminary check for that. We are running Rock Slide because I realised I can't do anything to Zapdos. In hindsight, whether that was really necessary or not, I don't know, because it probably wouldn't do a lot of damage to the Zapdos anyway. But I didn't want to make it like free for the Zapdos to come in every time on this. Heavy Slam, just for some stronger stab against things like Pheasant Dippity, if it does come, because this will have to be my Pheasant Dippity answer if, if it does come. And then we've got Knock Off, just for general annoyance and removal of items of, of things. And then Stealth Rocks, because if Bundle isn't Boots, then it will take chip damage every time. Um, again, if Zapdos isn't Boots, then it'll take chip damage every time. If it's a potential Focus Sash on Ogre Pond, and it isn't a lead for whatever reason, then again, it'll break the Sash, it could break Sturdy on Don Fan, so it felt like really good utility to have rocks. Like, throughout this, I was a special set originally, so I had Flash Cannon and Draining Kiss, but then I thought Carmine Pheasant Dipity would probably just screw me over. Could have run Encore, of course, um, but then I also had Light Screen on here at some point, I had Thunder Wave on here at some point, so... It was just really hard picking four moves, and I don't think I went with the right set in the end, but we'll see how it does for me in the battle. Tinkerton's been great for me this season, it's obviously just kind of annoying for people to deal with, because you know it's going to click rocks, you know it's going to click possibly Thunder Wave or Encore, you have to respect G Gigaton Hammer, because it does a lot of damage. So, it, you know, it, its presence is just annoying for Daria, and they don't necessarily have the best way of breaking it this this week, so it's just kind of here to be a nuisance to their team. The next team member this week is going to be Gliscor. Pretty standard with Toxic Orb and Poison Heal, of course, but then we are running Earthquake, U-Turn, Toxic, and Knockoff. Um, Gliscor's got the potential to be really annoying for Delp here. Now, obviously, yes, she does have an Iron Bundle, 
which is a bit of a problem, but this is why I have U-Turn, to keep momentum, because I can't allow the bundle to come in for free. But Gliscor does so well here. Um, it could potentially help with Domfam. Domfam does get Ice Spinner, so it might not, of course. Um, it helps with Zapdos, being an immunity to Electric. It kind of helps with Ogre Pond a bit. It kind of helps with Vesendipity a bit. It kind of helps with King Gambit as well, actually. So it, it does help with quite a lot of things here. Now, the bulkier things, like Milotic, yes, I could give it a physical defense boost, but if I do get Toxic on that, that would be great. I get Toxic on the Zapdos, that would also be great. Um, knockoff is there to get rid of any potential boots on a Zapdos. Um, and obviously I can't get static if I'm already poisoned, so it's pretty safe to click against Daria's team. U-turn is for momentum and then Earthquake is just strong stab. It does well against, like I said, the Gambit, it does well against the Vesendipity. It does something to bundle and I have got U-turn for any Ogre Pond that might be, you know, laying and waiting around. So it'll be some, it'll be some good chip damage on that thing. So, very standard set. We are running some attack because then that does mean the Earthquake's a bit more threatening to her team. But then we are running bulk as well to allow us to try and take on that Don fan and potentially a King Gambit if it gets a bit scary with Supreme Overlord and Sucker Punch mind games and stuff like that. So um, <clears throat> it's there just to kind of be a nuisance to Darius' team, which has definitely got the potential to do this week. The final Pokemon of the team this week and the potential to be the MVP is going to be Vile Plume. Now, Vile Plume on paper against Darius' team is incredible. She does have a Zapdos, which could be scary. Uh, and she does have the Iron Bundle. However, that is why I'm running the Yachi Berry. So I've gone for especially defensive here because this is my backup check to the Iron Bundle. I'm also Terra Steel to at least have the mind games of whether I'm going to resist ice or not. In case my Yachi Berry is burned by Dongtan, for example, with Ice Shard or Ice Spinner. So that's why I've gone for especially defensive with the Yachi Berry. We have put the other four in defense. You might be wondering, I've decided to go modest. With the expected bulk that I think Bundle will have, due to the fact it doesn't need to be timid in this matchup, it can be modest. You can either be timid with more bulk or modest with less bulk. So I've accounted for timid with more bulk. I will guaranteed kill Iron Bundle with Giga Drain with the expected bulk that I think it will have, which is something like 136 in HP or something like that. It's got no special defense whatsoever, this iron bundle, so if it lives, it'll have to be bulky in some kind of way. So being modest allows me to take that ice hit and recuperate all my health with Giga Drain and kill that thing. If it's not boots, then obviously after rocks, Giga Drain will be a guaranteed kill pretty much no matter what. Um, the only issue with this set is potentially the King Gambit. If I tear a steel, it could obviously help, however, I think Steel on this thing kind of redeems it. Leech Seed is incredibly free as a Sleep Powder. What I love about a Grass and Poison type is obviously Grass, Pokemon are immune to Powder moves and Leech Seed. But when you're Grass and Poison, Ogre Pond does not want to switch in or stay in against this thing when I could just click Sludge Bomb. And King Gambit is going to be the answer every time. Which is why I think Sleep Powder and Leech Seed is a nice little combination. If I can just chip it down with Leech Seed and Giga Drain, then it'll put me in a really good position. Um, so that's why I've gone for that combo this week. There wasn't really any offensive moves. The only thing I could have done is bring Moonblast for the King Gambit, but I don't want to risk giving it a special attack drop and giving it a Defiant if it is the Defiant set. If it's Supreme Overlord, then it could do a bit more damage, but me clicking Leech Seed and Giga Drain over and over again means I can recuperate health, I can put it to sleep with Sleep Powder, and kind of stall it out that way. Otherwise, I've mentioned Diary's got Zapdos. If I tear a Steel, then I kind of take that one a bit better. Um, there is a Don Fan, which I can kill with Giga Drain and just recuperate my health. There is a Milotic, which again I can sit in and just recuperate health against it. Vile Plume is a menace to this team. Um, so yeah, King Gambit could be the biggest issue to this, maybe Colossal too, uh, with Fire Moves of course. But yeah, that's the team this week. I know it's quite a long team builder. Hopefully you guys can see the vision I have for the team this week. But let's just get into the battle and get this show on the road. But before you do actually, make sure you do leave a like on the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. About 75% of you who watch the video aren't subscribed, so I would really appreciate it if you could leave a subscription for me because the, the growth and the support I've had this season so far has been fantastic, so I just wanted to thank you all for that. Anyway, rambling done, well, let's get on to the battle. Okay, so really sad news is I'm doing a post-com 
on this game. Because for some reason, my computer changed my headset. So I don't actually know why I'm wearing my headset in this battle, because I can't hear my audio, by the way. Um, for some reason, my microphone had been changed from my microphone to my headset. So the video didn't record my speech, which is really frustrating, because this game against Daria is incredible. So, I ended this battle like two hours ago, but I will try my best to remember what my thought process was while I was doing things. So, let's quickly go over the team. We've got the Cinderace, the Latios, the Substriker, the Tinkerton, the Gliscor, and the Vile Plume. So, Dari has bought every single, I'll just punch the microphone, every single threat that you could think of. King Gambit, Ogre Pond, Iron Bundle, Milotic, Colossal, which was expected, but also a surprise. And the Dom fan. So in prep, I think the six that Daria brought are the six we kind of expected. You could have probably swapped Colossal out for Zapdos or for Fezendipity. So that's the team. I believe I choose to lead off with my Latios. Because looking at Daria's team, if she leads off with the Ogre Pond, which is what I'm expecting then I'll have a good uh, lead because I don't die to a knockoff uh, even if she unless she's adamant if she's adamant then I outspeed and I have a chance to kill with Soldu Draco Meteor so that's why I'm thinking I'm gonna go Latio so I'm looking at her team and I'm also thinking Latios is probably one of the more expendable mons Vile Plume looks great here I remember I, I went down to the wire in terms of picking my team um, but Vile Plume goes crazy here like once the Colossal goes. After that, like, it goes crazy against the team. And after the game, Daria told me, oh yeah, you can see my cat just walks in the room there. Very kind of her to distract me right at the start of the battle. Um, so yeah, anyway, we're going to go into the game against Daria here. And I'm going to leave the Latios. And I'm getting ahead of myself because I don't really know what to say. But Daria is going to choose to lead with the Ogapon. So we did get the lead call correct. Assuming she's leading with this thing, I don't think she's going to tear in front of me. And I'm assuming she's probably going to be either Scarfed U-turn, Scarfed knockoff, or Sash lead with spikes. I don't necessarily want to click Psychic. Psychic would be a two-hit KO. But I don't want to allow the King Gambit a free switch in. Now I know Draco Meteor isn't very effective but it's going to do more damage than Psychic would and Draco actually if this Ogapon has no investment has a small role to kill so if I could just kill this thing turn one that would be incredible so I am thinking about it you can see here I do decide to click Draco Meteor in the end and I'm just waiting for myself, I'm just going to sip on my cup of tea as a Brit while I wait for this to actually take effect. I take a few, the game speeds up towards the end, I promise. So I click Draco and I miss turn one, which is great. And you can see my reaction, I was not too happy about that. Um, and that means Daria gets a layer of spikes up for free. Now those spikes would have gone up because it turns out this is a Focus Sash Ogre Pond. But I could have also then just killed it next turn. So I would have got one layer of spikes and I would have had a full health Latios. I, had, I decided to click Draco again because like Daria doesn't have a great switch into any dragon moves this week other than the Gambit. And uh, we get like one of the lower rolls. Uh, I think it was like 87 to 103 or something. And then I live knockoff unless she's either banded or it crits and she crits. So two turns in and I've missed the Draco which means Daria got a free layer of spikes up and I low roll and I then die to a crit. So yeah, not a great start for me at all. And I'm now really struggling to think about what to go into here because I don't want to take chip on Cinderace because I need it to keep as much health as I can because I'm the double edge set. So when I need it to break, I need it to have as much health so it can survive as long as possible. Um, Tinkerton is like my answer to the bundle, so I'm kind of thinking, okay, I'm going to have to go Vile Plume. Um, Vile Plume is going to kill this thing of a Sludge Bomb. She might decide to knock off here, which is bad because I have got the uh, Yachi Berry to help with any ice moves on the bundle. 
With my investment, uh, I live even a choice specs ice beam. So as long as I get frozen, I kill it. But she decides to get a second layer of spikes. So if I hadn't have missed that Draco turn one, there would have only been one layer of spikes, which would have meant that I wouldn't have been chipped down as much. I'd had my Latios. It would have been great. But three turns in. I'm sorry if you can hear that there's a truck going past my house for some reason, and it's been very loud. Um, yeah, turn three, like, we've lost an extra spike. Uh, we've, sorry, Dari gets an extra spike, and we've lost my Latios when I really didn't need to. But the pawn is gone, which means it's going to be Colossal that's going to be the Terror Captain this week. So, in comes Bundle, I'm like, this is great. Um, she might scout here and click flip turn, but uh, this is my check. She does flip turn, and Vile Plume begins to earn its goat status right here, and it gets the effects more on the poison. Now, <laughs> admittedly, poison's probably the worst one. Um, I would have loved static. Static would have been incredible. Um, or not static, sorry. Paralysis would have been incredible. Um, but I'll take the poison because we... I don't know if we learn. I expect a boots bundle. It's not boots. So actually, poison and like stealth rocks is going to rack up really quick uh, on the iron bundle. But Daria does go in to the Colossal. Now I Giga Drain, it does a little bit of chip. This thing doesn't have any recovery. So it's... Nice for me to chip it down because this thing's a threat. However, once this goes down, um, Vile Plume is just kind of almost free to sit there against the majority of Daria's team. So I'm going to go into my Gliscor. Not really sure what to expect. Kind of maybe expecting a uh, a fire move, I guess. I am physically defensive on this. I might have also been predicting a stealth rock, but. We do see the Terror Ghost, which we pre we expected in prep, um, because it's a spin blocker. I don't have Blast Blitz, though. Uh, but actually, we see some heat. This is a Power Herb Meteor Beam from a Colossal, um, which is actually terrifying. Now, Dario was running Steam Engine on this, because obviously Blast Blitz is a thing on my draft, and I do have Flip Turn on my Latios as well. So if I gave this thing like plus 6 speed and it got to plus 1, this thing breaks my team so hard. So now I have a choice to make. Do I want to... Uh, there's no items, so knockoffs can do little to nothing. Earthquake is also going to do little to nothing, because it's now not four times super effective. And U-turn is going to do nothing. So I'm like, okay, do I click Toxic? I decide that's what I'm going to do, because I have to let this call go down. I can't switch into anything at this turn. Dari can freely click a fire move as well. Um, so I have to let Gliscor go down, which isn't great because it's, I say it's a check, in building we kind of forgot that Domfang gets Ice Spinner, but this was my Domfang check, and once Domfang was gone, Zeb Striker was free. So I do in the end, uh, I'm getting ahead, so ahead of myself again, we do decide to clip the Toxic here. I'll just wear my clock down, I'll click the Toxic button, Jack, thank you. Thankfully we do hit. Um, and we are going to lose Kaliskor here. So now, um, I have to make a choice. How do I want to train? I've got nothing that can take this down now. Like, Latios would have been my best bet. Just click a Draco Meteor against it and kill it. Or a Psychic and kill it. So Cinderace dies. Uh, Zeb Striker probably dies. And Fireplane probably dies. So I'm thinking I have to go Tinkerton. I have max special defense for the bundle. Um, so doing the calcs, I can live a flamethrower from a modest 252 Colossal, if that is what Daria has brought. Which is incredible spice and heat, by the way. I can't kill it back, but now it's toxic. I need Tinkerton just to survive two turns. Or to survive a turn and then die on the second turn, because that's two turns of toxic. I can then click knock off, and I can also get my rocks up. Rox is going to be really useful because that helps me identify the bundle item. And it's also just going to be good chip on, on everything else. So I take my time, but Tinkerton is my play here. So I have to go into it. I take a flamethrower after Rox. I just have to take there's no crit. If I get crit here, then it's it's essentially game over. Because I can't kill this thing in any one hit. So I have to give up something else. Um, so I break the mold. I'm going to click Stealth Rox this turn. 
because I'm pretty confident I'll live it. Actually, in hindsight, I probably should have clicked knock off here first, um, just so I had the guaranteed damage that I needed in case I do get crit now. So I'm going to click the stealth rocks. I'm going to get my rocks up. Dario's thinking, what on earth is he doing? Just, you know, giving me mons for free, probably. Um, but the rocks are nice for me here. We do see a flamethrower. We do live the flamethrower because Tinkerton is especially bulky af. Um, we are leftovers as well. Naturally, we outspeed, so I'm going to click knock off on this next turn. Knock off and toxic is going to put it in range where I can pretty much come in with like probably vile plume and just take it out. Could also come in and just click pyro ball with the Cinderace, but. I don't really want to reveal my Cinderace just yet because that thing is going to break the bulk that Daria has um, in Milo 2 and potentially Donphan too. So Daria does get Terror Blast, it's free against my team, there's no reason not to. Why click Flamethrower when I could just swap into Cinderace? I was never going to, I was always going to let Tinkerton go down. So now Vileplume becomes so vital because it's my only way of checking Bundle if it's Scarfed. If it's not Scarfed then I have got my horse as well but I'm gonna have to go into Vile Plume. I'm gonna outspeed because I haven't given it a speed boost and I'm gonna click Giga Drain which could then which will then potentially be Vile Plume's second kill of the game uh, which is funny because Vile Plume is putting in like more work than like you know Persimian, Mismagius etc at this point and it's the lowest tier one I have in my draft so I am modest and I don't know if it actually mattered in this but being modest uh, is really nice in this game. Even without investment, it just allows that a little bit more damage, which allows that little bit more health regeneration from Giga Drain. So Colossal goes down, which is huge. Now, Vile Plume only has one threat left, and that's the King Gambit. However, this King Gambit, I'm going to speed tie with because I didn't invest in speed to outspeed it. Um, so it could come down to a speed tie if I am able to beat this because I am Sleep Powder and Leech Seed. If I'm able to put the King Gambit to sleep, that gives me a free switch to my Cinderace, and Cinderace then gets a chance to cook. So in comes the King Gambit, and we find out it's uh, Supreme Overlord. Which is terrifying, because in prep we all just kind of thought it would be Defiant, not a Supreme Overlord. But now I've seen it like in action, I'm kind of like, you know what, Supreme Overlord makes sense. Uh, I don't have any great ways of stopping Sucker Punch. So this thing as a late game cleaner would be really effective against me. But I'm going to go for Sleep Powder here. Um, in the hopes that she Swords Dances. And I kind of expect her to Swords Dance at this point. Because I don't think she can kill me. Now, I think she thinks that I'm physically defensive, but I'm especially defensive. She doesn't know this is my answer for Bundle. Although, I, it probably gave it away when I stayed in. I do land the Sleep Powder, thankfully. Now, Sleep obviously isn't guaranteed. Uh for a turn. They could wake up here, but I am just banking on the fact that Daria doesn't wake up on this turn. Um, if King Gambit wakes up this turn, I lose. If it doesn't wake up this turn, I then have to hope that she doesn't wake up turn two and takes a sucker punch. Um, she could possibly live a pyro, but actually no. I don't know if she will live a pyro ball because I am adamant. I haven't run the calcs. But I imagine Pyro Ball would kill because it's stab, super effective, adamant, cinderace. So now I'm just like, right, I have to click Swords Dance because the Milo Tick's coming in. Or I have to bank on this thing being asleep. So I just, Daria does switch out and goes out into the Milo Tick. Now, if this Milo Tick had Flame Orb or anything like that, it would live the hit. Otherwise, bold, 252 HP, 252 defense. Milotic dies, guaranteed, to a Silk Scarf Adamant Double Edge. So, Daria now has no switch ins. Absolutely nothing takes this hit. So, she has to either sack the Milotic or sack something else. If she went into Donphan here, she'd probably lose the game because I do have the Quick Attack as well. I don't know if she was expecting that, but Quick Attack could obviously out prioritize an Ice Shard from that Donphan. So, I'm clicking Double Edge. Um, I'm going to do a hell of a lot of recall to myself, but. The damage is nice. The damage is so nice here. Um, and if she gives me my, 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 my low tick, it's not the biggest threat because I guess the Vile Plume will take this thing on 1v1 quite nicely. Um, we click double edge and my low tick. The crit doesn't matter, by the way. Like, that is not a makeup for turn two. Like, that crit just did simply did not matter. If she was 
running the Marvel scale, then that crit would have mattered 100%. But without it, the crit did not matter. So I guess with the sleep turns, we kind of got a bit lucky. But with Poison and Stealth Rocks, Iron Bundle has a chance to die after Quick Attack and Poison. If I get a crit on Quick Attack, it kills Bundle. And I think Daria just loses at that point, unless she gets a wake up with a Sucker Punch. So, it's not looking good for her. I think, personally, if I was in Daria's boots, I'd now go into the Iron Bundle. And then look to revenge kill my Cinderace here and now, because Domfan's not going to appreciate it, and the King Gambit cannot come in here. It just cannot, because it's asleep. If it wasn't asleep, it would come in here and click Sucker Punch. Because the Supreme Overlord boost after the recoil will definitely kill me. But she goes Donphan. So I'm like, okay, I'm clicking double edge. If you double into the King Gambit, absolutely fine. Because I think Vile, Vile Plume can take on Donphan as it is. Um, so I click the double edge here. I don't know how much this will do uh, if it's defensive. But I actually found out this is an offensive Donphan. Which I wasn't really expecting. I think it was definitely more defensive we were expecting. Because we, as like, uh, when I was team building this with a couple of the others, we thought Zeb Striker was really threatening here. But Daria didn't seem to think the Zeb Striker was that threatening to her team. So we click Double Edge and take it down to Sturdy. So Cinderace has just destroyed Milo Tick and Dom Fan. Uh, she does click Earthquake. Doesn't really matter. I would have probably died to any move at that point. And so, we're now down to this thing and the Zeb Striker. So, I have to come into this. I can't go into Zeb Striker. I could go into Zeb Striker and Terrifier and do that. But, we decided to go into this thing. And actually, it could be a bit of a throw. Because I completely blanked on the fact that Don Fan will probably have Ice Spinner. If it's offensive, it's going to do a lot of damage. But when it comes around to picking the moves, I don't click Giga Drain. I just need to kill this thing, get any health back I can. She decides to click Ice Shard, and I think that is a misplay. Um, I don't know why she didn't click Ice Spinner there, because after the game I realised she does have Ice Spinner, um, and that would have done a lot more damage to my Vile Plume. And obviously, I only get one HP back because she only had one HP left. So. We're now here, Vile Plume and Zeb Striker versus King Gambit in a Iron Bundle. Now, <laughs> if you weren't looking in from a draft perspective here, you'd be thinking, well, of course, King Gambit and Iron Bundle are going to absolutely terrorise these two mons. But, uh, well, but obviously I've burnt my Yachi Berry. So actually the Ice Shard was just a potentially a safe way of doing it in case, I don't know, I was like a rogue scarfed Vile Plume or something. I don't know. Um... But I'm like, right, well, I have to terrestrialize now. Um, I had been trying to save terrestrialization for my Zeb Striker, but that's not going to be enough. Zeb Striker just dies to a Sucker Punch. So I have to have Vile Plume do the work for me here. So I'm thinking, do I want a Terra Steel? I have Terra Fairy, Terra Water, Terra Steel. If anything, Terra Water makes more sense because obviously I then resist water and I could be Yachi to resist the Freeze Dry. And if she's Ice Beam, I also resist that as well. So, I'm going to Terrastalize into Terra Steel. It all comes down to whether Daria predicts me to do this and clicks Hydro Pump. Or whether she clicks Freeze Dry, expecting me to stay a Grass type. And she clicks Freeze Dry. And in my head, I was like, well, you can see my reaction. This is my way in. I didn't get frozen. And we Giga Train and take all of my health back. So now we are back 2-1. In our favour, somehow I've turned this round to make it as close as I could. And we're up against the King Gambit. Now, King Gambit is asleep. It's been asleep for two turns. So I'm very much thinking it's going to wake up. It's got max boost with Supreme Overlord. Uh, there could be a Swords Dance coming. At which point it's then plus two. And Max Supreme Overlord boost as well. And I'm just like, well... This is where Terra Steel... Comes in 
so handy. Um, and obviously Dari has to think, because she's asleep, does she want to try and attack me? Predicting a switch. Does she want to... Uh, yeah, take so Swords Dance. I'm just waiting at this point. Okay, so I switch out into the Zeb Striker, hoping she stays asleep. Because then all I need to do is click Low Kick. All I need to do is click Low Kick. If she's Chopple, it still does like 45 to 50%, which is a nice chip that I need. Um, so I click the Low Kick and I'm like, please don't wake up. Get max sleep turns. This is my out. This is what I need to win. Um, I click Battle. I, well, I don't know what I'm looking at here. I think I'm looking to see if Low Kick or Supercell Slam does more. And she wakes up. And she clicks Sucker Punch and I die. So in my head I'm like, oh no. This could come down to Sucker Punch Mike games. Now I'm thinking at this point she'll have Kowtow Cleave. So she'll just set up a Swords Dance and then Kowtow Cleave. And as soon as she wakes up that's turn time. Because I can't do much damage to her at this point. So I click the sleep powder because I have to. I have to click sleep powder. And just hope it lands and hope she stays asleep for as many turns as possible. Because the only way I'm winning this is if I get sleep and leech seed and then just giga drain my way back up to full health. So she clicks SD. And in my head I'm like, does she not have a Kowtow? Because Kowtow probably kills me there. But she might also be thinking I'm max defensive at this point. So I do land the sleep powder, which is my out. That's the only thing I had to do. So I'm like, okay, I've landed that. Next, we've got a land Leech Seed. Um, Daria stays asleep. Excellent, fantastic. I land my Leech Seed, and this is going to be a huge chip each turn. Huge chip each turn to um, get my Vileplume healthy and potentially take a plus two move if she doesn't have Kowtow. In my head, I'm thinking, right, she has Iron Head, Sucker Punch, Swords Dance. I'm thinking maybe Knock Off, and maybe she's not clicking Knock Off because I don't have a Yachi Berry anymore. She stays asleep, so I don't know if she's clicking Sucker Punch there or if it's a speed tie or what. But I do click Giga Drain just to get a bit of health back. And then obviously with Leech Seed, we're now getting it down to about 50%. So I just need like one more turn of sleep. So I think actually at this point, my best play is just to click Sleep Powder in case this thing wakes up. Because um, if I then land the Sleep Powder, I get one more Leech Seed and then I can click Giga Drain and that Leech Seed should be enough to kill it. So. She stays asleep this turn. If I just click Giga Drain there, then I probably would have just won. Because um, I think I, I'd have had the chance of taking a hit. But I think Sleep Powder was a safer play in case she did wake up that turn. Because I think that would have probably then guaranteed me the game. So I do think that was a safe turn to just kind of go for the Sleep Powder. I'm going to do it again. And she does wake up. She clicks the Iron Head, Supreme Overlord, plus two. Don't flinch. And we land the Sleep Powder again. So as long as Daria doesn't wake up, we kill this thing. And we win. So can Vileplume go 5-0 in this game where it just wreaked havoc? I mean, it, it, even if it lost and, and Daria stays asleep. So I'm like, okay, I think Giga Drain and Leech Seed's enough here. Giga Drain just about brings it into Leech Seed range. And you can see my reaction. I'm like, have I actually done this? Have I actually brought it back? to actually a winnable state and it dies you can see my reaction and I'm like at this point obviously you can't hear me now which is a real shame but I'm like how on earth have I just come back from a, a miss and a crit in the first two turns to somehow win this game 1-0 I, I think I've dumbfounded myself I have no idea how I've managed to do it so yeah that was the game against Daria and the uh, Minneapolis Nyanskaradas it was insane and i'm so upset you didn't get to hit a live comp for that but postcom is going to have to do this week i fixed the issue so hopefully it should be fine from now on but please check out daria uh below because her team is insane she's doing really well this season and she does just play for fun like and so as you can see the colossal set was just insane so um yeah go over there and check out all the stuff that she's doing because it's really good stuff um and she's doing well this season i suspect she'll probably get into the playoffs so make sure you keep up to speed with her so yeah that's enough from me just make sure you do leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video 
Um, but that's enough for me now. I look forward to seeing you next week. I don't know who we've got next week, so I can't tell you. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.